Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You were looking for quality commentary and you've gone the short straw. For those of you who don't know me, my name is James Burley. And the closest I can get to any form of Right, let's try that again without me hearing myself in the background. See, there was the first mistake. We can get one out of the way. Basically, they put me on before lunch purely because they can't find to renegotiate my contract to see if we can do this again after lunch. But I will see if I can write this in the commentary. We have Phil Robert Shaw versus Austin Shin for this game. And Austin is beating the field. Phil is second. Now, interesting permutations as a result of this. Um, if Phil wins, he will go ahead of Austin on spread because his spread is superior. Austin wins, that will put him two games clear of the rest of the field with four to play. Phil has started drawing his first tiles, and we have we have a blank. We have an E, we have a few consonants. I'm only counting six so far, and there's a second N. No bonuses on that first rack for Phil with the blank. Be interesting to see what he does here in terms of what he keeps behind to make the bonus. There's not too much going for him on that rack, to be fair, without using the blank, which obviously he won't do at this stage. In fact, cred is as high scoring as it gets just the 14 points and he's holding the blank so we'll feel he has some form of advantage obviously we can see that we're holding a rack that contains a bonus just the one rattled So Phil electing to exchange CDN and has now left himself with a plethora of bonuses on that rack. As expected, Austin pops rattled, rattled down. Now Phil has 53 sevens before we even go to the eighth. You'd be expecting him to look at the T of the triple, quite probably, or the E for the full timer. Noshery would fit nicely for a full timer. Pioneers. He'll take his time on this one because he'll be very aware that he has got a range of bonuses and a range of options. He'll want to make sure that he gets the right one. He will have been rattled by Austin's first move. Not the most difficult pun I'll have to do today. And we'll want to make sure that he gets the right response.
So hearing from the background, Phil has bonus, just looking now to see exactly which one he's gone for. He's gone for Pioneers, he's gone for the four-timer option and scored 78 in the process. Austin has fulfilled that well-known Scrabble philosophy of play a bonus and you will pick up an awful rack, pick up a W and you will have a U because Austin is gifted in the world of Scrabble. He's picked up two U's to go with his W. So we've got the... Triple letter spot next to the W. Sorry, next to the O where the W could go. Won't really do much in the way of the rest of his rack though. Apart from O W, that will still leave him with the two U problem. Wolf taking advantage of the parallel plays there. E-R-U-U. -U. It will depend on his pickup to see what he gets here. Phil's duplicates, double A, double M. A couple of spots where he'll get some points for the M here. He has played. Imam. Rack never really. So Austin back with a pair of U's. A reasonable chance of managing that rack, whereas Phil will now be having the chance to look for potential eights with the rack he now has in front of him. <laughs> Phil able to manage his rack really towards a bonus in one go, whereas Austin has or will need two in order to do this.
if Austin really wanted to clear his rack here, he's got the six. He could play six letters. Uh, Brig, B R I G U E, onto the S of Pioneers. Not a high scorer. Doesn't really do much in the long term in terms of rack management, just clears what he's got. Taking his time over this move is Austin. So Quackle coming up with Briggs and Rugby's as the potential moves. It does block the S, which will limit Phil's bonusing opportunities. It won't stop him bonusing on the next move. We're just seeing some simulations of where the potential move could go. Sometimes very easy when you see a duplicate on your rack to become a little bit fixated on it. So Austin has gone for one of the 20 point mood. He's gone for Rugby Beast. And Phil taking the eight letter option of pleating, which will have been jumping out to very many of you as the optimum move there was the move you would have gone for. Certainly was the one that I would have gone for had I been playing this. For no other methodical reason, really, than it's the one I spotted. Austin now has some stars he can score with. Still clunky, but there are some reasonable options with this rack. He'll want to get a decent score off the Z to keep within the game. He won't want Phil to be getting ahead too early.
or getting too ahead too quickly rather. Austin choosing to keep the Z, getting rid of that last U and the selection. There is still one U remaining. And as is the way you watch your opponents play off the U's and you pick up the Q, which is something that Phil will be looking at now because he will be wanting to Manages rack away from what he's picked up. Quash fairly quickly. Now that's Austin with the potential for some very high scorers here. Agonize, certainly noticeable across the top. By my reckoning, a hundred and seven. And indeed, he's played agonized for a hundred and seven. Two six nine two ten. Phil has some consonants that he really needs to manage before he can do much else. Luckily, there are some decent scoring opportunities on the board for Phil in order to keep the gap narrowed far for 40 there. Gets rid of the duplicate R. Gives him a chance of picking up some vowels to go with the consonants. And on the condition he does, that rack could look a lot more pleasant. So Austin plays Bohia down onto the bottom and Phil 
all consonants, I suppose, if I was playing this, and let's be under no illusions here, I'm not putting myself in the same league as either of these two gentlemen. Quet, W-H-E-T, it's at first glance scores 28. Be interested to see through his play what his opinion is on holding the two S's at this moment in time. Show lovely down there. Which, to be fair, I should have spotted. Giving himself a nice. Right back into Austin's lead. in terms of what Austin has got here what options has he got it's a tricky one actually Depends what he wants to do now. It's does he want to keep it closed or does he want to um, just keep scoring? Probably wants to do a combination of both um, in terms of the fact that the lead's only slight. He does have it, but it is only slight. We've got a nice quackle simulation coming up, which will help us here in terms of what Austin could do or perhaps what he should do. Vein onto the triple does certainly look like a very plausible move there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And Vena, 32 for both. Is that 32? 29 for both. 29, I apologize. Takes out a nice scoring spot. Which would make it a little bit harder for Phil to get back into this one. He's taken the 29, he's taken Vane.
In terms of what Phil's got, if we have a quick look around the board off the P of Pioneers, we can get the Y doubled putty for 22, but that is very aggressive. Um, maybe it needs to be aggressive. We'll see what Phil decides on that regard. The only eight that Phil would have with that rack is untrusty. And that's not an option on this board, sadly. I'm one of those players, really, that tends to go a little bit hell for leather in these situations if I'm a little bit behind, especially against someone like Austin, who I would know to be a strong player. I'd know I need to take my opportunities while I can. That gap is less, obviously, between Phil and Austin than it would be between myself and him, but Putty would certainly tempt me as a move there, I think. Phil's found something scoring much higher than that. 39, in fact. Stai agonizes. Choosing to play off the S to take the score. Scry, in fact. Takes out the triple from Austin, puts Phil 10 behind. few nice looking fives on Austin's rack. What I'd be doing now is I'd be looking around the board just to see if I can find a nice high scoring spot for the K, the Y, perhaps both together. Nothing jumping out is immediately obvious. Austin will have to be careful now. There is there are sevens on Phil's rack. And Austin will want to be mindful of the fact that though his lead is only slight, it is a lead. Just the ten points at the moment. So Austin has played light for 24. Found the second blank in the process. Phil has a and taunted and I believe mutated.
which don't on their own fit. So the tempting thing I suppose to do in this situation is to keep the rack relatively balanced, get the score and see if you can create an opportunity for a bonus. Now, Phil will be aware that the second blank is unseen. We obviously now know it's sat on Austin's rack. So while he may want to try to do something that keeps him in this and stops that gap becoming wider. He may not want to take too many risks at this stage. He does have sixes that would get onto the triple in the bottom right hand corner. A tune, a tend. Haunted off of the H. Is possibly what would tempt me if I was in Phil's position right now. Scores me 32, keeps me in it. I think, to be fair, that is what I would do in this situation. Undate is an option once again off the bottom um, corner triple. Maximizes the D within that score, scores 29. Phil's gone for Haunted, 32. It's the turnover of tiles. Austin has responded very, very quickly with vice like 101, and our Phil has put him on hold. Pretty sure that's now been accepted and we've moved on. So Phil now running out of time, running out of options and with some scoring tiles on his rack. Austin has now played two bonuses in this game that score over 100. Which will obviously make Phil's job all the more difficult. Not far off the end of the bag either, so Phil will possibly be thinking now about minimizing the spread gap as well as his played 44 he's played pox maximizing the score for the x fairly logical move I 
I suppose if I was Austin here, I suppose my the advice I'd be giving myself is don't do anything you'll regret. There's not really more I can say. We've still got that bottom triple open. That could be potentially costly if left purely because of the size of the tiles left in the bag, but not really much that would go down there. Iron ionize certainly an option. Austin has gone for the parallel play on Vice, like with Eosin. Going more for the score there. Leaving himself with I.O. And knowing now that there's very little indeed that Phil can do about it. I think in that situation, I probably would have gone for Iron Eyes and left myself with a one tile to go out. Probably because I wouldn't have trained myself to look for Rios in too much. But Phil's priority now will be making sure that what he gives Austin from his rack isn't too much and that he gets a decent score. If I was looking at this, like many of you, I think I'd be concerned about the J that's currently on the rack. Um, in terms of places to put it, they're not obviously forthcoming. Jutter. Will give away some score if he plays it. But does clear a lot of the rack. Jurd. Maximizes the score off the J, and there's nothing really that Austin can do about the double letter score left underneath. He can take points off of the J with IO, but where has he gone? Yeah, Oi and Exo takes Austin out, takes it to a comfortable win. 506-414 to Austin. So if we go back to the standings, we have Austin now two games clear at the top. And um, we'll put a big dent in Phil's spread as Phil leaves the chasing pack behind him. 